Hello everybody, today we're going to be playing The Blind Griffin. I've actually had this game downloaded for a little while, and I don't really remember what it's about anymore. I think it's like a mystery type thing. I don't think it's actually a dating sim, probably just more like a visual novel than anything. But I'm excited. Alright. Uh, sure. Hey there. If you're feeling confused on how to play, we'll help you out. Left click your mouse or press enter on the spacebar on your keyboard to read more text. Copacetic. When you see a blinking golden eye uh, icon on the lower right corner of the text box, that means you can continue on. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, right? Make something I want to read. Ah, that's pretty jazzy. You can also click on the history button, or press T, it takes history. Yoohoo! Yeah, me! Aw, oh, cute! Both of them are adorable, actually. Mm, what are you doing over here, Viv? I'm explaining to this person on the other side of the screen here how to play our game. Sounds annoying. It sure would be. Oh, don't be like that. Just go in and show off your expertise, won't you? I can't do this alone. I guess I've got no other choice. So if you right-click with your mouse, the in-game menu will show up on the left, and you'll be able to save your game right away if you want. Is that so? You can right-click again to hide this menu. Ha ha ha. Pretty jazzy. By the way, the glossary is for when you see 1920 slang that you don't know. These words will also look different, like the word bearcat. Hot-headed, fiery girl. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's pretty jazzy. If you click on Bearcat, you'll get to read what it means. Oh my gosh, you're super cute. Who are you two handling the tutorial? Yeah, I think Alexei and Gio are busy. Too busy arguing, more like. Well, you forgot to mention the help menu. The button shows up when you right click. Alright, all of this is pretty, like, straightforward, right? Yeah. Uh, nah, I'm good, bruh. Mm hmm. Sorry, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. Oh boy. The glass jar I was holding explodes, sending smoke and bits of glass everywhere. Well, that didn't go the way I wanted to, to at all. My mentor ain't happy about this either. I'm probably in for a lecture. But what did I? What did he really expect? I'm new at this. When I came to San Francisco with my family, I never thought I'd end up becoming a magician in training. It was maybe only number eight on my list of job choices. Actually, I'm not really sure what I expected. At least, there hasn't been a dull moment since I got here. This all started a little over a week ago. Ooh, Ooh that's an awesome mechanic. All right. It wasn't long after getting here that I decided it was time for me to leave the nest. Don't get me wrong, I love my family. I always will. But I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing working laundry. Besides, they never came out and said it, but I think my parents are both disappointed that I still haven't middle-aisled it. Hmm? To get married. Okay. To walk down the river aisle and <laughs> to be joined in the bonds of marriage. You got plenty of offers, sure, but I wasn't about to get married to the first schmuck who asked. And marrying one of them would have meant being a railroad, ri railroad wife, or a laundry wife. Now I've got my sights set higher. I don't need a man to make things happen for me. Go you. Or so I thought. But there wasn't exactly a lot of jobs for a Chinese Jane. A female. Okay. Though, even if I was a boy, I don't think I'd have had much luck. I guess there's a reason so many Chinese people work in laundry. Just as I was starting to feel like I'd done a real dumb thing leaving my family, I noticed some things in the air that I had never saw before. Hmm. There were words floating up around me, shimmering and sparkling words that looked like they were made of smoke. At least, I think they were words. I can't read. Never mind how. 
Anyhow, I got curious. They formed a trail, and seeing as I had nothing else to do and nowhere else to be, I followed where they led. Turns out, at the end of the smoke trail, there was what looked like a candy shop. Well, I wondered who had here had made the smoke float in the air and shine like that. But mostly, seeing all that candy I could never eat just reminded me I was dangerously low on money. I bet whoever owned this place wasn't looking to hire someone like me to help out either. I turned away, but a soft voice called out to me before I could go. Wait, are you here to inquire about the job? The word job was music to my ears. I turned around so fast I almost fell over. In front of me was this real tall dame. I know what dame means, but... A woman? A woman? i never seen a woman that tall before. She was dressed to the nines and looked like she had a real heavy sugar. Lots of money. Money, money, money. I bet she's the one who owns this place. I nodded, but suspicious, like... Mm. I'm Marie. What's your name? My name, huh? I had to think about that for a second. <gasps> Can we name? Can we name it? Yo! I refuse to go by my real name, so I'll tell her it's... Please type in a name for the heroine and press enter. If this is left blank, a name will be randomized for you. Ah, that's interesting. Alright, what should our beautiful girl be named? Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> For some reason, blue sounds kind of cool, right? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Sure, fine, whatever. Yeah. It's Jamie. Jamie, is it? That certainly is an adorable name. You're here for that job, right? The way she said that was kind of shady, but I had nothing to lose. Yep. Yeah. Go proceeding. Great, excellent. Not at all pretentious sounding. Come in, come in. You took me inside the place. Candy lined the walls. It looked legit, but too perfect somehow. I started putting the pieces together. So, a candy shop, huh? Pretty good cover, isn't it? Yep, I knew there was something else going on here. She led me into a back room and pushed a button that made the wall open up. I went down some stairs and... Ooh. Sure enough, there was a speakeasy at the bottom of him. <laughs> Who's this plain Jane? Yeah, I'm a girl, and you're one to talk. You ain't exactly a catch yourself. Uh, Bozo with no manners! <laughs> what was that, you bear cat? Now, now, take it easy, Emil. <laughs> this is Jamie. She's here about the job opening. Nice to meet you, Jamie. I'm Vivian. Oh, but you can just call me Viv for short. I nodded. This sourpuss here is Emilio. Don't pay him no mind. He's all bark and no bite. Got it. <laughs> Says you. Says everyone. I beat it. Emilio gave me a once-over. You back off, son. You back off. If anyone were dating Vivian, okay? You got any experience bartending? You don't exactly look like the type. Why, because I'm Chinese? He waved his hand at that. After I thought about it, I figured this place doesn't care much about a woman's color. A person's color. Feels moi. Ever heard of a dame mixing drinks? Ah, cool, he's not racist, he's just misogynistic. Couldn't argue with that, not like I had any experience. Another quick study. Wonderful. We've got another bird here who can mix drinks well enough, and he's pretty tied up with other duties. But he's pretty tied up. That bird was a man. I thought I was just a woman. 
We want someone who will take his place so we can focus on music. Think you can do it? Mary and I'd love to have another girl here. I ain't in the position to be picky about work. If you'll have me, you're on. Copacetic! What are you- Where are you staying? Is it close to here? Um, well, I'll level with you, Mary. I left my parents' place, so I ain't got a place to stay right now. Is that gonna be a problem? No worry, sweetheart. We've got an extra room. This all seemed too good to be true. There was a catch. How much is pay? Mm, how does a saw buck a week sound? Ten dollar bill. A double saw buck is a twenty bill. It is not, in fact, a male deer with saws for antlers. <laughs> a guy like me wasn't going to complain about that. That was way more than I would have made staying with my parents. Copacetic. She beamed when I said that. Like I said, I'm a quick study. All I'm doing is bartending? Missing drinks? And helping out at the candy store upstairs. You'd just be watching the place, really. It's easy. You'll do great. Alright, I've got no complaints. I'm in. Wonderful. I still don't think this is a great idea, Marie. We don't exactly got people lining up, you know. Give it up already. Emilio grumbled something in Spanish. I'm no Spanish expert, but I don't think it was anything nice. Now I've got some business to take care of. Jamie, you should rest before tonight. The Blind Griffin opens at 6 o'clock on the dot. Be there and look sharp. Vivi, do you think you could show her the extra bed we've got? You got it, Marie. Let's go. You're so cute. Say, ain't you got any luggage or anything? Not just the clothes on my back. Well, that means less to carry, I guess. This way. Have a nice mat, Bearcat. Will do. He didn't seem to like that answer much, but I ignored him after that and walked out. Do, 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 do. Vivi and I went down another set of stairs and into a room on the left side of a hallway. It's a library. Well, a research room. Research? I never heard the word before. Oh, uh, research is when you try to learn more about something that you don't know enough about. You can read about it, or do experience, or ask people. That sort of thing. I nodded. Vivi gestured, gestured for me to go ahead. I looked around. Books everywhere. What do bootleg bootleggers have to do with all this research for, I wondered. It's all magic. Alright, I'm gonna cut this episode off here so it doesn't get too, too long. This looks amazing. I'm probably gonna go ahead and record another episode right now. But, alright. Until then, see you.